Welcome back to the community, everyone, and thank you for being here. I appreciate it. A new announcement today, a couple of days ago, we hit 5,000 subscribers. And I wanna thank you all for making that possible. I really, really appreciate it. Like I said, I don't know everything, but I try to show what I do know, or at least what I think I know. If you get a chance, drop down in the description, check out the website for t-shirts, stickers, all kind of cool stuff. Today, we're gonna to do the swing axle removal. Uh, my last one was an IRS, as you can see here. And I'm not a huge fan of the swing axle. It's my first one. They're a little different to remove than my last video I did. But you know what? It is what it is. In 1968, they came with the IRS, if you had the auto stick if you had the four speed, that was the last year for the swing axle, which I have. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that today. After that, we're gonna move along, starting next week, I believe, and we're gonna be wire wheeling the underneath of the car, doing body patches. I'm gonna use Rust Bullet, it was sent to me, and a friend of mine used it years ago, and it is a really good product. It's better than me putting Rust-Oleum underneath the car. This stuff will seal it tight and take care of it for a long time to come. So thanks for being here. Let me go get changed and let's get started. So what we have here is the swing axle and you can see the difference versus an IRS. This is what the IRS axle looks like. Okay, so my engine's already out. If you need to go down into the description, there is a video for engine removal. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on this. First, we gotta go inside the car, so let's do that. So now we're under the back seat, okay, and your shifting coupler. You're going to loosen that up and remove it off because it's hooked to the nose cone shaft of the transmission. You're using eight millimeter, okay? So let's, oh, tighten it up pretty good. Let's loosen that screw up. Okay. And a lot of people try to pull on these. What you can do is grab a hold of your gear shift and pull it back, like, say, towards second gear, so to speak. And it'll pull almost off to make it a little easier. Wow. That is on there. There we go. Well, wasn't that fun? And I just had it off recently. That's the funny part. Okay. Now you're going to next lift the boot up off of your emergency brake handle. Okay. Or handbrake. Get two 10 millimeter wrenches. Break the locking nut loose. So you're going to need to disconnect your handbrake cables. You break this one loose. Take your locking nuts loose. Okay, then you're gonna go ahead and loosen the nuts to them. That way, here we'll take the locking nut out of the way, just don't lose them. You're gonna loosen these up so you have play and it makes it easier to remove the cable. Now, if you have to hold these in place, that's a six millimeter to hold this, okay? At least on mine it is anyhow. Just thought I'd throw that little tidbit in there. Okay, we'll see if that's loose enough. It probably is. If not, come back, take the nuts off completely. Not a big deal, okay? Now, one thing that I did do is this car has a Z bar, okay? And it's a factory sway bar, so to speak, that goes from here up through and over. It's actually, you can't see it right now, but there's some of it right there. It's hanging there. I removed that already, but unfortunately, the studs at the bottom that go through, they broke. And guess what? They don't make it no more. They don't make the, the studs. And if you even find used ones, people want like 150 bucks a piece. So I'm gonna use a camber compensator. 
and hopefully that'll keep me from rolling over when I act like an idiot with a swing axle. So you do have to remove the Z bar first if you do have one because it holds on to the axle tubes. So that's already removed and here's what we're going to do next. What I'm going to do first, and I already did a couple things so you didn't get bored watching me, is I already pulled the cotter pin. That's a 36 millimeter socket. You can buy them online. And I'm going to spin this off. Obviously, you'll need to use a torque multiplier or a very strong breaker bar because I believe they're 250 foot pound. I can't remember offhand because I do so many different cars. So they're on there tight. But I already have mine broke loose. So we're going to take that off. We're going to pull our drum. Okay. Now there is the e-brake cable right there. Okay. So we're going to end up removing that and pulling it out of here completely. Okay. Now there's two ways that you can do this. One, we can loosen the 14 millimeter bolts. There's four of them here. Pull this cup off and the seal will have some oil run out from the transmission and pull the backing plate out of the way and hang it there. Okay, because the axle is going to pull out that way. Or, because i got to disconnect the brake lines anyhow, i got to put new ones on. Or we can go ahead and pull this whole assembly off. So you can do it two different ways. So let's pull the e-brake cable off first to get that out of the way. you got to go ahead and disconnect the e-brake cable. And when you look around back here, on the backing plate, you'll see a 13 millimeter bolt. Okay. Now, I have already went ahead and used a little wire brush, cleaned it up, and I used some PV Blast on it. Hopefully, it'll come off without breaking. We'll see right now. Okay, so I'm going to put a ratchet on here, and we will see if it comes off without breaking. Go real slow. It might break. i got to replace it all anyhow. I'm going to turn it back a hair. There we go. Try to clean them threads up. PB Blast sometimes helps, especially if you clean up around it first. It's probably gonna break. I have a funny feeling, but what do I know? I'll be putting on all new brake cables, pretty much everything, to be honest with you. See, I didn't care if it broke, so it didn't. So when you're doing it, don't care, maybe you'd be lucky. There's the bolt. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to see if I can cheat here a little bit pry this back take the cable off there we go all right and come on ouch This clip was a pain in the butt. Usually they're not that bad. I guess this has just been on here for so long. But, okay, I'll remove the other side. Give me a second. How am I gonna keep showing you the same thing back and forth, okay? Okay, on this side, the whole bracket came out, which was convenient. It slid right out through the hole. It just fought with me on the other side, but things like that are gonna happen. So, okay, handbrake cables disconnected on this side. Your axle tube. There is a clamp on here that holds the brake line to it, so it don't flop around, okay? I'm going to go ahead and pull that clip off of there. Now remember, some of these parts, like mine, have been on since 1968, so they're going to be stubborn, depending on, you know, your vehicle. And when's the last time the stuff's been off? Mine, unfortunately, forever. So, I don't know if I'm blocking you. Hopefully not. Let's see how it's sliding off there. Okay, no big deal. Ah, 
Ah, it's been on there a long time, huh? I'm replacing all this, so it's okay, but if you're not, just be careful, okay? Don't take it any further than that, because you're gonna have to disconnect the brake line unless you're removing the backing plate and hanging it up with a bungee cord. I'm gonna remove my backing plate, and the reason is, is I'm going to be changing all these seals, the bearing, everything. So, let's do that next. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the backing plates. Now, you don't have to. When you loosen these bolts up here, the axle will slide back with the whole drum. You'd have to still disconnect your brake line now. But I'm gonna replace the bearings, the seals, everything new so there's no leaks. Now, before you do that, spray a little PB Blast on them four bolts. Come around the back and spray the threads on them so that you can get penetrating oil on both ends. Now remember, this is a swing axle and oil will come out of here because there's seals in here. So put a drain pan underneath and I'm gonna use an extension on my impact. I don't know if it'll break it loose or not. This is 14 millimeter bolts. Thing that could go wrong was going to. My breaker bar is a half inch and some of that stuff would not fit on there. So she said three eighths ratchet. When you're doing this, let you don't bugger the threads up on your axle. Oh, okay. So let's buzz them off real quick. My battery might be low on my gun because this Milwaukee usually does pretty good. Okay. Okay. Here comes some oil. Alrighty. Now, when you take this apart, can you see? I was checking. When you take this off, should have had a rag here. Make sure you know what goes where with these spacers, okay? Set them up just like that so when you put it back together, you know what to put where, okay? Because there's a lot going on in there. All right, let me get a rag. Now on the back, you have your brake line going to the backing plate. I'm going to cut mine. Don't you do that unless you're replacing your brake lines. Like I said, I'm putting all brand new everything on. So I'm gonna snip the brake line. Trust me, this one, it wouldn't come loose anyhow without braking. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that. Okay, so I'm going to just snip. All right, now remember, I'm putting new brake lines on. Don't break yours on purpose, okay? Let me move the camera around here. Little. Tap. Let me check everything one more time. Okay. And bonk. Okay. Here comes the backing plate. A bunch of dirt fell off. But we're going to be making these all pretty. Let me wipe my hands off here. That's what you have left. Okay. The backing plate sits on a lip here. The inside of it. Okay. And then, of course, the four bolts hold it on. Now there's your bearing. I'm gonna have a good time getting it out of there, I already know. We'll set up some homemade tool to get it off. We'll get it figured out. And then of course, replace all the seals and shims. We're gonna pull these shoes. We're gonna blast the heck out of this backing plate and paint it real pretty and put everything new on. Okay, let's get the other side apart. We are at the passenger side. I'm gonna pop these nuts off. Make sure you have your drain pan under here, okay? I meant to say bolts, but you get the deal. Make sure 
sure like the IRS a lot better. But that's just me. I'm going to snip this brake line because, like I said, I am replacing all that stuff with new. Now remember, you're going to have fluid coming out. I mean, more than likely. Okay. Remember the way this stuff came off. Okay. Stack it in your cap. Okay. Set our backing plate in the pan. You're going to have a little oil dripping. Okay, now this is going to give us, Z bars in the way, this is going to give us access to the rest of the bolts we need. Okay, well, at least on the outer parts. Okay, but we are going to end up replacing the bearings. We'll test them, see what they look like, but I probably want to just refresh everything so I don't have to worry down the road. Now we're going to remove the shock. Okay. You have a 19 millimeter nut on the outside and a 17 millimeter nut on the outside. Or I'm sorry, the bolt head, my bad. And I'm going to go ahead and put the gun on there because that's been on there a while. I did PB blast at first, though. You're really not going to be able to see both sides at one time, obviously. But put my gun on there and a wrench on this side. do it now. That was really on there. Holy smokes. Okay, I spun the knot on a few threads so I don't bugger up the bolt because so we don't want to do that. Okay, don't lose your nut and your washers or anything. Keep count of everything. I don't know if that'll... Wow, this stuff's been on forever. Oh. There we go. That was a pain in the butt. We have to remove this bolt, this bolt, and one right here. I don't think I'm going to be able to get my breaker bar on there. Let me try. Yeah, I can. I want to try to at least break them loose. Come on, get off of there. It's hard to get them in there. Okay. And there's one in here. Oh, I missed my IRS. Okay. So zip these off and of course that's going to turn we knew it was going to okay and as before keep your nuts and bolts together so you don't lose them i'm just not with it today for some reason, I guess we all have them days. Okay, it's hard to see, but I have a wrench on one side and my big ratchet on the other. Wow. 
this baby is on there. Okay, now we're on the driver's side and we're gonna go ahead and remove the lower shock bolt. That's a 17. We'll see if my gun's gonna do it. Okay. And I want to put this back on there a few threads. So we don't bugger the threads up. Some of these parts have been on way too long. This is what you call rescue in a car, that's for sure. Come on, just grab onto there. I'll just do this, it'll pop out. Wow, amazing. Now we've got to get these two nuts and bolts. Oh, oh it was, surprisingly. We all get them days with this stuff. Come on, really? this one we'll see I doubt it these have been on here way too long probably since brand new I'm guessing oh, I guarantee you these have definitely been on there since 68 Let's give the big gun a try. It should do it with no problem. Oh, and I gotta hold the breaker bar. Whoops. Hold the breaker bar, not let it go. Wow. This is just fighting me. We'll get it. Wow, that was not fun. I can't figure out why it was so hard to get off of there, but it was. So, for the passenger side of the car, you have your starter. Okay, now don't forget, I'm not going to be able to take you under here with me, but there's wires in the back of the starter. Make sure to remove those and mark them if you're unsure of yourself for any reason. Okay, now I'm under the car. I am at the nose end of the transmission. Where it goes into the tunnel. You have two 17 millimeter nuts on here at the rear mount or front mount, depending on what you want to call it. Now, I ran a little wire brush around there, cleaned up the threads because there was gunk all over it, and hit it with PB Blast. Let me see. I think the battery needs charged on my gun. Why aren't you going on here? Okay. The one on this side, there's a ground strap. I'll show you in a minute. There's your ground strap, although this one looks pretty good. I think I'm going to just wire well and clean it up. And then, of course, this nut here. Well, at least when I'm putting it back together, it'll all be nice and smooth because everything will be clean. And I can't complain, even though I want to. So we are at our mounts. You can do this two different ways. You can take these off. 
but then you got to lift the transmission up over these studs up and out. I'm going to take them off here and pull the little nuts and bolts out and the tranny will slide straight back. Do what way you want it. There's really not no right or wrong way. I'm going to change the mounts regardless, so it don't much matter. So let's pull these mounts. other side here. Like I said, when you're go to put this all back together, take out some time. Time is something, well, I guess we have some of us, but clean up all the nuts and bolts with a bench top wire reel grinder. Although I've been wanting to get one of those uh, ultrasonic cleaners. Maybe I should buy one. Let me know what you think. And then we can do a film on it and test to see how it works. Okay. Oop. Come on. Okay, it's gonna fight. It's the last one, it has to. Oh, really? Let me reposition. Oh, goody. The head of the bolt stripped out. All right, give me one second. This is the way I didn't want to do it. Come on. sure to disconnect your clutch cable. Mine's broke, so it doesn't matter. But when you disconnect it, make sure you get a pair of vice grips and clip them on somewhere if need be. Sorry, I bumped the camera again, because if not, you're gonna be pulling the pedal cluster out if it falls off the hook. So that's about it. We should be able to pull the transmission. Let's give it a try. All right, I don't know if I need a board. If my jack will go high enough, I'm not sure. Oh, like that. <clears throat> so I think I'm going to pull this brace before I put it back in. That's for sure. Okay. And we got oil running on the floor. I'll just have to clean it up. Got to unplug. It's okay. I'll wire it up over. Let's keep the first bite then. Wow. Oh. That wasn't a whole lot of fun. I did not enjoy that. All right. Transmission's out. Problem is, first swing axle for me. The axles have a hard time making it past here. So I'm removing all this anyhow. And whatever you do, don't never jack your car up at that. Don't do that, okay? But a little frustration today. Everything fought me. Didn't make for a good film clip. I apologize there. But that happens sometimes. Nothing's perfect. So... Transmission's out, and I'm tired. Well, wasn't that interesting? I don't swear on my channel, but I really wanted to. But you know what? These things happen. Swing axles really aren't that hard to pull, but this transmission's never been out since 1968, and I live in a rust belt. So a lot of them bolts that were fighting me, and then the transmission sticking, not wanting to come out, it's totally normal if you're living in the Rust Belt. So 
expect these things to happen. I refuse to edit my films and act like it's a perfect world because it's not, okay? So, starting next week, we're gonna keep ripping more stuff out. We're almost done, we're almost down to a bare shell. And then we're gonna be wire wheeling, cleaning up, and we're gonna be using Rust Bullet. And I think you guys are gonna like it. Like I said, I've known other people that have used it, and it's amazing. And it stays on for a very long time. At my age, it'll probably outlive me. So, thanks for being here. I'll see you next time. <laughs>